Hi, this is Charlie Montatuyella with another video on Native American flute making. This video is uh, upon the request of lots and lots of our uh, friends out there that email us and say, could you make a video about how to do this? This is another one of those videos like the eagle whistle making video that I think a lot of you are going to say, I can't believe he's telling us this. Um, I hope it is anyway. I hope it's something you find useful. I will give you a little history about uh, what we're doing here. There were times in the past, remember I've been making flutes for about 27, 28 years. Um, there were times in the past that I've told people this kind of stuff uh, about what we're about to make and uh, eventually, I guess 10 years down the road, it's gotten to the point that these people believe they have invented it when actually I haven't even invented it. This is a, not really a secret, it's just I'm bringing over um, an expertise that I have from another work that I've done a lot in my life, which is furniture making. Um, I'm bringing that over to show you um, how it is that uh, the people protect the wood without using um, lacquers and, and paints and solvents and all these things that strike fear in the heart of hippies. But uh, anyway, little joke there. I like hippies too. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make some flute wax. And uh, this is a piece of beeswax. It's hard. You know, it's, it's really good stuff. And I, I tell you that, uh, you know, I've learned this from, from furniture work and furniture making, which really, um, I have always attributed it to the Amish because they have a hand rubbed finish that they use many different types of materials and oils and waxes and things to achieve. Um, but uh, really, Indian people have been doing this for a long time too. Uh, hence the name of our uh, flute wax, we call it imitation bear fat because bear fat used to be really the thing. Um, really uh, any kind of animal that has a lot of fat on its body Indian people would uh, render this fat and use it as um, uh, protectant in many many different ways they would protect not just their flutes their houses their canoes uh, their clothing their body you name it uh, we use this stuff for everything and like I always quote people Cherokee people we use bear fat for everything and really oh my gosh <laughs> we use it for a lot of stuff but anyhow I'm going to show you how this works and what we have to use and how much of it to do and keep in mind that everything is uh, with a grain of salt, a 100% uh, safety please, make sure you're careful. Things like wax doesn't look very volatile but you know this can catch a fire, it can actually flare up. Um, and cooking oils, if any of you don't have experience in the kitchen I would recommend not even attempting this. Uh, I'm not asking you to attempt it. I probably should put the disclaimer on everything. This is the way I do things. If you do the things this way, it's because you know uh, you want to uh, to do it yourself. I'm not asking you to do this. So, um, If you want to learn how to make your own flute wax, or at least how we make ours, that's what this video is about. In either case, uh, come take a look at what we're doing here. Okay, so to do this, you're going to need just a couple of things. Uh, once again, if you do this, please be careful. Fire is dangerous. Oil is dangerous. Um, you know, cans, you can cut yourself on this stuff. Everything, please be careful. Uh, make sure that you uh, are certainly in your right mind when you're doing this. And I know a lot of my good friends out there are saying, what? <laughs> right mind? What did that have to become a stipulation? Anyway, so what I've got is a piece of pure beeswax. It's about a two inch square. Uh, for those of you out there with rulers on the metric side, that's about 50 millimeters. So about 50 millimeters square. And of course it's not really that thick. It's uh, This one here is only about an inch and a half thick. So roughly two by two by one and a half. I wouldn't write this down. Uh, that doesn't really matter so much. And a lot of you are like, yeah, I know you're going to have to tell me what the percentage of this to this is. And really it's easier than that. It is a lot easier than that. Um, so we have our hobo cooker, just a tin can that uh, we use to melt this wax in because the wax does leave some residue behind. You don't want to destroy uh, anybody's cookware for, <laughs> for this project. Notice the can's starting to smolder already. Let's put our wax inside of there. And uh, so everybody knows that this can is sitting on top of a, of a burner. Notice I'm doing it outside, so FYI, um, I'm going to turn it down just a wee little bit. I can. I don't think I've used this one to heat up wax before, so it may be a little bit new, and the coating on the inside may be doing something, which may or may not be a problem. Hobos seem to survive it, so all of you people out there that are concerned about types of oils and whatnot, 
I'm just kind of glancing over inside of it. You don't want it to steam up too much. Now that steam initially was coming from the inside of the can. Um, not uh, really a big deal. The wax should kind of put a tamper on that in just a second. Keep in mind the wax in there is in excess of 200 degrees. If this stuff gets on your skin, it is going to burn a lot hotter than a candle burning you. Um, so notice I'm kind of haphazardly sloshing it around. You really need to be very careful because a little bit of that stuff, there was a little droplet of it, spit right out. Uh, if it spit on your skin, it's going to be really hot. Uh, but no different really than cooking. All we're really doing is cooking right here. You know, we're just cooking. <laughs> Not much different than cooking bare fat or bowl of soup. So we're cooking our wax. It's still melting. And I'm sloshing it around just a little bit so that it melts evenly, which melts it a little bit more quickly. Still got some hot wax in there in our hobo cooker. You don't want the wax to really start burning either. And really it won't burn, but it'll scald a little bit, in which case it starts picking up residue from whatever outside. So we got our little two inch square of wax in there. This is my favorite sunflower oil. I've gotten to where I use that sunflower oil on a lot of things now. Um, it comes out of clothing better than baby oil or mineral oil does. <laughs> you guys are thinking, wait, what's that have to do with making flutes? Uh, oil does stain your clothes, among other things. And uh, One other thing too, you don't want to glance down on top of this thing unless you're quite a ways away. It's better to do it from an angle. Like I say, chemistry is really my forte here. You don't want to stick your face right on top of that, especially not when you're splattering it around. Just to give you guys some additional warnings, a lot of times I do make this stuff in the house, and many times it may be even when we're cooking or something like that. If a droplet of water got inside of this, it's going to snap, crackle, and pop just like frying bacon. So you might want to uh, uh, be cautious of any liquids around this. Liquids and oils don't normally mix well or excuse me, liquids, waters and oils, things that are water-based uh, don't mix with things that are oil-based well. So we've got that. It's still heating up, but it's almost completely melted. And like I said, this isn't an exact science. I'm going to give you kind of a, uh, a just-in-case scenario. You've seen about how much of the wax that we used you can use a measure like this, or you can measure it in a measuring cup, or however you like, or you can do like I do and eyeball it. Um, I'm looking in the bottom of the can. I'm going to point with my little metal rod on the end of my caliper here. The wax has come up to about this level, and that's about as far as it's going to go, even when this last little tiny bit melts, which it's almost done. When it melts, I'm going to turn the fire off. Um, but anyway, so we're about to this level here. You need to use about... Um, two parts oil to one part wax. I prefer to be about two and a half, almost three parts oil. So we're going to raise it from this level to about right here. And the reason I like it a little bit more oily instead of uh, waxy is because the wax is a great protectant. Using the wax on the flute is what we're really looking for, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to achieve. And that is it. Um, so uh, we're using this old ratty camp stove. I had to go fish this thing out of storage to find it to show you guys because I wanted you to see the safest way to do it. Um, but anyway, um, so if you mix it a little bit more oil, it causes the wax to become a little creamier, which makes it apply better, but it doesn't necessarily make it protect better because really what you're wanting to do is to get the uh, complex carbon chains from inside of this beeswax, which it looks like we're completely melted now. Now the steam you see coming off of it may be hot beeswax. Um, but you want to get those complex carbon chains down inside of your uh, um, uh, flute, inside of your wood. And most of you have flutes with a really uh, well sanded finish, even if it's not lacquered or oiled or anything like that. That well sanded finish will only soak up so much of the imitation bare fat or flute wax, if you want to call it that. So you got to be careful with this. In chemistry, I'm going to show you the best way to do this. In chemistry, it's better to cock this sucker over sideways and pour this guy in here sideways. 
And the reason for that is because we have a cool oil going inside of a potentially hot oil and there may be a little bit of reaction with those. So now I'm going to use my little stirring stick here because the, uh, the oil cooled the wax off a tiny bit and as it cooled that off it uh, caused it to go ahead and coagulate some. If you notice, watch. I'll show you what coagulation is. Watch that wax. Just like in a candle. It starts to cool off a little bit. Hey, this piece here is probably... Oh my god, it's hot. Oh my god, oh my god. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this isn't really that hot. But I paid attention. I know when to check it here. So I've got my stick. Once again, I'd use something disposable because this is going to soak into this wood. And if this was your favorite uh, mixing spoon, you may have just ruined your favorite mixing spoon. Unless you like the taste of beeswax, in which case you may have just improved it. So it's kind of six of one and half a dozen of another. Is there going to be a video that I don't say that in? Six of one and half a dozen of another? Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm checking the consistency. I have actually got the wax level up to the twice as much area here. We've got twice as much um, oil in there as we do wax. And... Um, it feels pretty good. It feels like I like it, but not really, because I know once it cools off a little more, it's not going to be just right. And there we go. That's about two and a half times as much oil, which we're going to set aside. Like I told you guys, I'm going to tell you everything, all the secrets of flute making here. Okay, so check this stuff out. Let it cool off just a little bit. And then we're going to check its temperature here. It's not too bad. Check its consistency. It's very creamy. So we're going to set that little dude stirring stick down. And now it's time for the secret ingredients. What's that? No secrets. Okay, that's why I put this stuff in unmarked bottles. Ooh, that one smells really good. I don't know what it is, but still could pop, so don't stick your face in front of it like I do. This comes from a lot of time of uh, practice of using this. I just become very, I guess, uh, less concerned about its consistency and what have you. Got some honeybees in here attracted to this stuff. Use a little bit of this. Most of these are just astringents that I'm putting in here. You could use, ooh, that one smells, smells really good. Wow, I should use that stuff in my hair. Yeah. And then this one, let's see what this one is. Okay, I'll tell you what this one is. This one's clove oil. Mm. Wow, that's some powerful good stuff. And I've only got a couple of drops of this one left. Let's see. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. That's good stuff. That's eucalyptus. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of it in there. I know. I know. I'm going to get email after email about what those other two bottles are. Okay. I'll tell you, this one here is a commercial jojoba oil uh, that I like. It's got a few other ingredients, but it's natural, and it's mostly jojoba. Uh, really, I probably should have put the rest of it in there, but I think it'll be good like that. Uh, these other three bottles are all astringents. This one is a secret ingredient, uh, which I've told a lot of you what it was already anyway, so not really too much of a secret. But these other two are uh, natural oils that are astringents. And I use them to not only cut down on any bacterial growth, but at a lot of events that we attend, we have people that pick up our flutes that are on the table and play them before we get to say, hey, please don't play that. Um, and some people say, may I play your flute? And I'm like, sure, go ahead and play it. So hold on just a second while I wipe it down with our bear fat because this stuff here kills germs. Anyway, so uh, like I said, not really a whole lot to it. It's very simple. I would recommend not even following my uh, two and a half to one ratio. I would recommend doing it however you feel that it works best and find out what your ratio is that produces the grade of wax that you prefer. And it's almost cool enough. Let's see. Yeah. Let me feel it immediately here and see if it's too hot. Yeah, that's not hot at all. 
it's almost cold enough I think it's probably ready to pour in my little keeping jar here and see if I can do this without making too much of a mess let's see I really should learn how to do this left-handed so that I can do this without obstructing the camera's view. So there is a bottle of flute wax. Um, I'm putting it in a jar. I really recommend you finding something safer because glass, some glass don't heat up really well. This is a baby food jar. How many times have people heated a baby food jar up inside of a pot of boiling water? There's the answer to whether it's a good idea to put it inside of a baby food jar or not. Uh, just don't feed this stuff to a baby. They may not like the taste of it. Uh, although, be it said that, this stuff is not too unsafe to use. And certainly use it for chapstick myself. So uh, there you have it. I'm going to put the remainder of this in my can out here in the shop that I keep my uh, bulk wax in. And I'll save this one for when we go to an event to... Uh, to take with us. Like I say, very good astringent and it's not going to pop anymore right now, or at least let me say this correctly, mine is not going to pop anymore so I'm going to stick my nose right down there and see what it smells like. If you pick up a good odor of some of the oils or the other um, uh, astringents that you put in there, like I say I try to keep it natural because you got to keep in mind this stuff's going to go on whether it does initially or eventually it's going to go in and around the mouth um, you want to keep it as natural as possible, so um, make sure that you don't put something in there that you wouldn't put in, on, or around your mouth. And uh, that's that's the stuff. So once again, we've got a little bit of beeswax. We put it inside of here. Um, you can use paraffin. I prefer beeswax. I've used paraffin in the past. We have some sunflower oil. Um, there are oils that are, are better probably. I personally don't like to use things like tongue oil. Um, or uh, linseed oil. I know a lot of you guys use that. I, uh, I'm not really fond of those. Um, I just like things that are a little more safe. Sunflower oil is good stuff. Really like it a lot. We cook with it in the house, so we always have some extra. And this is, of course, one of the bottles I keep out here in the shop. And then the other ones I used, I showed you my eucalyptus. I showed you my jojoba oil. With the jo jojoba oil actually causes it to uh, uh, soak in better, in my opinion. And then the other two, the eucalyptus and the clove oil, are more for astringency so that they clean and kill germs. And then my magic oil here, which uh, I usually keep it down under, um, but uh, it is a, a good astringent as well. And all of this stuff, for the most part, this stuff I got from a craft store. This I've bought from just about every grocery store you can imagine. But like I say, it does originally come from down under. Wink, wink. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please uh, make sure you check out our flute making book, which is just about on the shelf. Of course, at the time that this video is out, you may be saying, hey, I've already bought a copy of this flute making book. Uh, but anyway, the most elaborate book on Native American flute making, made by a Native American, especially the two. They're kind of nice. I hope you've enjoyed our videos. And of course, if you have any questions or anything or any comments, please make sure you post them. We like nice comments. You can leave some bad ones because sometimes they inspire me to make more videos too. Uh, but if you avoided the bad ones, that would make us happy. So <laughs> please subscribe to us and don't forget to friend us on Facebook. It's uh, Blue Bear Arts on Facebook and uh, here on YouTube if you're watching our video. Hopefully it's not a repost and you found it at uh, Blue Bear Arts as well. And our website, www.bluebearflutes.com. Um, we hope to hear from you and certainly enjoy helping you guys make your flutes. Take care and have a great day.